final kind of formal concert. Um, we have the orchestra up first. We're going to play, um, to start here, a wonderful tune called Dance of the Tumblers. is actually mostly made up of students that are either on their second or third instrument. So it's always really kind of an amazing thing to see this ensemble, kind of more than the other two major ensembles, really grow throughout the year. And I think this year has really been the, the biggest amount of growth for these players, as this year was actually the first year, I think it was the first year, this ensemble at the CMEA Festival was able to earn an excellent rating, uh, which is really nice because it, it shows that growth.
one of these. Mozart, um, a great ballad tune, and one of those uh, one of those ones that's been performed for a very long time as part of the core repertoire. We have two pieces left for you here this evening for the orchestra. The first of which is Rustic Dance by Elliot Del Borgo, kind of a great feel, and you can see kind of the American kind of countryside picture. It gives this real kind of feel of being kind of an old dance. It's a little aggressive. It feels like you might be kind of maybe a little later in the night, maybe after the family has gotten into the family vintage. The, the last piece for you will kind of be taking us into a more vintage time, all the way back to uh, George Philippe Telemann's uh, Symphonia. So these will be our last two pieces for you this evening.
You know, is this piece is a very old piece. She thought she'd use a very old style of tuning, apparently. So we have to excuse the slight interruption. After Symphonia, it'll be about a brief 10 to 15 minute intermission. In the lobby, there are a few things, and I'll kind of show you this while we're waiting for that to be fixed. Uh, Part one is the fact that the elections for the Performing Arts Board uh, are happening. It's a pretty simple ballot. Uh, you'll see that when you see it on the table. There's also a donation bin there. Donations are always accepted. And of course, we have some upcoming events as well. Tomorrow, really upcoming, uh, we have our annual community outreach concert at the park, and we, we team together with the Neighborhood Watch organization. Uh, the Creekwood Neighborhood Watch Group. Uh, and they, they are bringing out, uh, I believe Modesto PD is having some folks come out, fire folks are coming out um, and doing some presentations and just kind of being out to have fun in the neighborhood. Uh, we have uh, a taco truck will be out and they're working on getting an ice cream or something cold out there as well. There'll be face painting. Um, we'll be providing some live music with the jazz band and concert band. It's really just a nice time to go out to Creekwood Park from 11 to 1 and just have a party and have some fun out at the park. Monday night at 7 p.m. in the Vikings Den is our annual instrumental music awards night. So that is at 7 p.m. That is dessert potluck. Of course, next Thursday is graduation. Uh, but this summer we have two, obviously, normal big things that happen. The 27th through the July 4th is the fireworks booth. Uh, Marilyn Shine, our, our current treasurer, who's over here, She'll, she'll wave. She's in her nurse's jacket. So if you if you need some help, she may help. She, we might call her on duty. We'll see. Uh, but she also has, uh, she can help uh, if you want to volunteer this summer at the fireworks booth for any amount of time. It is a lot of work to put on. Um, but to use an example, so a few years ago now, uh, we raised about $10,000 in profit, which allowed us to replace the entire drum line, which was just over $9,000. Um, so all that money really goes to help throughout the whole year and really sets us up well. So the more people we have volunteering, just the easier it is for everybody. So if you can volunteer during that work that week, that would be great. We also have, and Marilyn will have these with her, uh, our script. Uh, and this script you can buy in $10 increments. This is to be used at the fireworks booth as if it were cash, but it only works at our fireworks booth. So the nice thing about this is if you know or if you have friends that want to make a block party, and pool together $500, you can pool together $500 and have someone just go pick up all the fireworks the whole neighborhood wants. So which is a really great way to do that, or you can just buy $10 for yourself because you only want sparklers, and why well, you only want sparklers, I don't know, but people do. Uh, so we have that, of course, we're still marching in the 4th of July parades after Symphonia. Please go enjoy the intermission in the lobby, make some donations, vote. There's also a letter in there about a uh, Disneyland trip or LA trip for next June, and I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. So without further ado,
take us about 10 to 15 minutes to reset for the concert band, but again, please enjoy the intermission in the lobby, making donations, buying fireworks, script, all those wonderful things. Thank you very much.
Well, that, of course, is Malagueña, a very fun Spanish dance tune that kind of has a very interesting path as it comes originally from Spain, goes down to Cuba and Mexico, finds its way back into the U.S. and is now kind of a standard dance tune. Um, it's become kind of a folk tune of really all three areas as well as the U.S. We move on now to on a hymn song of Lowell Mason. And you can see in the picture, that's Lowell Mason, obviously a very old colonial American, but this is an old American school. And Lowell Mason was actually one of the founders of the American School of Song. And what this means is that he was actually kind of our first songwriter. He was a colonial American, he helped lead schools. You can actually find uh, a Lowell Mason School of Music. He kind of had this whole philosophy about singing, about doing folk music and bringing all of these American colonial ideas together and pulling together these different cultural things. Um, and this hymn song then is kind of a collection of one of those hymns he wrote um, that was very famous when it came out and has kind of continued to be played and sung. Some of you may have sung it in a church from a church hymnal, uh, so you might recognize the hymn, but this is on a hymn song of Lowell Mason.
influential American composer to a very influential British composer, but oddly enough, uh, for the band world, more of a, an influence on the American side of the ocean than in England for quite a while, uh, because America kind of latched on to the band world pretty early, and that was because of John Philip Sousa. Uh, Sousa would bring over all this music from, from Europe and put it to his, well, what became the Marine Band, and really kind of took it around the country and made it the thing to go see. You can imagine four, five, six thousand people going to see a band concert. Um, Sousa really kind of established that, but Hulse was really kind of the first modern composer to write for a wind band, similar to what you would kind of see on stage. Of course, then instrumentation was really kind of whatever was there. Um, so the original score for this first suite in E-flat actually has like 18 different trumpet parts because it has every trumpet you could think of from bass trumpet to cornet trumpet, flugelhorn. It also has different types of trombones, different types of tubas, and everything in there. The entire clarinet family was represented from the E-flat clarinet up high to the alto clarinet to the contralto clarinet to the bass clarinet to the sub-bass clarinet. So this, this instrumentation is actually modernized from that time. But Hulse is very, very influential. So we go from one man who really established the American school of music and the idea that every student should learn how to sing and read and be part of a music program from a very early age to someone who, who really wrote for school bands and school ensembles all the time. In fact, Hulse wrote most prolifically for an all-girls school in England. So this is the first movement, the Chacon, from Gustav Hulse's first suite in E-flat.
Well, this has really been kind of a very, very long year, as they, they always seem to be. Uh, but this has really been a great year. Just, just about a month ago now, or less than a month ago, we had our big collaboration concert over at the Gallo Center for the first time. Um, and it was really a great success, both kind of as a, as a performance itself, uh, and really as a production, we had so many things that were happening as part of it, so many great parts that were kind of integrated, all of the talking, the singing, everything that was really part of the, the performance experience. And of course, it's a good time not only to reflect uh, this time of year, to reflect on what we have done this year, but really to kind of project and, and kind of prepare ourselves for what we want to do next is really the theme of this year's collaboration concert, kind of as the undertow, was you know, what it means to have learned something. What is, what is going to be that evidence, the proof that you have learned something. And this next year is really going to be our movement forward. We're going to take that leadership bound and move ourselves forward. Two years ago, or well, last year, uh, feels like two years ago, and we really took the year to really figure out you know, what our role was. We figured out our role was to learn. This year we figured out, we need to figure out what it means when people have learned things. And you've seen some of this in example. Holst writing for mostly, uh, or prolifically, for an all-girls school, making sure he really supported school bands. Even as a professional composer, most famous for the planets, someone who wanted to sit down and write music for young people. We have Lowell Mason who really focused on making sure that everyone had access to music at all times and everywhere in the country and then eventually in the world. The last two pieces we're playing are ones we played at that collaboration concert with The Sun Will Rise Again and The Lord of the Rings Symphony, both really great examples of people having learned something and taken a step forward. So hopefully as we move into next year, you're gonna help take us forward. This school is turning 25 years old next year, which for those of you who maybe go into some classrooms, it might feel a little older than 25, or if you're going into the B building sometime in August, it'll feel way newer. But the goal for us next year is to really push ourselves to not just find out about leaders, to not just find out about what other people have done, but our goal next year is going to be to take that step and become the leaders we want to be, and really take a step forward. So we're really doing a couple things already to kind of plan for that. The first of which, and really kind of the, the pinnacle end point of this, is this ensemble has been invited and approved to go play at, at Walt Disney Hall down in LA, which they got to go visit um, over spring break. Some of you may have wondered about that weird 24 hour trip. It was a great time going to Disney Hall and we got to go backstage and see this great Frank Gehry building and all of the intricacies involved in that, meet one of their composers who's a graduate of here, Andrew Norman, getting to get that really private tour uh, of areas you're not supposed to only get tours of. Well, next year in June, we're gonna go perform on that stage as part of an international festival uh, with World Projects. So we're really, really excited about that. So big congrats to the, to the band for being good enough to be able to do that festival. There's a packet kind of look, has a letter in the front of it that details all the information for that trip next June, how much it's going to cost, when those costs are expected to happen, and ways you can kind of help earn for students in the group, whether they're wanting to go or if you want to go, a way to kind of earn credit through fundraising and through other means to help us pay for that trip. Uh, we'll be seeking lots of donations, we'll be doing lots of stuff throughout the year, uh, but again, the fireworks booth is the first big one. The better we do at that fireworks booth, the better it kind of kicks us off into next year. So that's really kind of that end goal and end vision. There's lots of other stuff going on, but this, this ensemble, the orchestra, the jazz band, uh, next year we're gonna be starting a beginning band thanks to the, the help of our administration allowing us to do that. So we'll have uh, all the beginning folks that haven't played before um, or maybe haven't played for too long are gonna be able to kind of cut their teeth, so to speak, instead of being thrown to the wolves and expected to kind of as football season approaches, they have about a week and a half, and then we have a football game. It's a lot of music to learn. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun next year, but please continue to join us and be part of that leadership. Now, I want to make sure, speaking of that leadership and remembering the past, uh, this is the time we really want to take to thank all of our instrumental music seniors and really take the time to acknowledge them. So I'm going to call them all up to the front of the stage. I believe all of them are here. 
uh, but the first is Miss Kimberly Jimenez. Jeremiah Garza. Jose Ramirez Gonzalez. Justin Lacombe. send them off, we're going to play our school hymn. Is two, two of which you should be familiar with because I know you are all at the collab concert at the Gallo Center. Uh, but the first of which is The Sun Will Rise Again by Philip Spark, again written uh, in remembrance and in honor of those that uh, were victims of the Japanese tsunami some years ago now. All the proceeds from the sales of this piece go to a relief fund in Japan to help continue to help those victims. So anytime this piece is purchased, 
uh, all of the proceeds go straight to that fund. So anywhere in the world, someone is buying this piece, it, it, the, the proceeds still go to help that organization. The last piece, of course, we're playing for you tonight is the Lord of the excerpts from the Lord of the Rings Symphony. Uh, and a great, great work uh, by Johan de May, written to reflect the actual books of Lord of the Rings, not the movies, but the books of Lord of the Rings by J.R. Tolkien. Uh, and really just a great piece of work uh, and really kind of a great way for us to end it. This is definitely, uh, and the, the same is true of the orchestra, this is definitely the hardest set of literature I've put in front of these kids as a whole package. Uh, and they've really stepped up. It's been, been truly great from the collab concert to tonight, adding two pieces from tonight that we didn't do a month ago. So please enjoy these last two pieces. Uh, and again, we have the community outreach concert in the park tomorrow, as well as the awards banquet on Monday night that we'll hope to see you at. Uh, so please enjoy these last two pieces.
Kim is doing the necessary evil of tuning the timpani. Uh, if anybody, by the way, has like 13 grand they just want to spend on something, uh, it's about how much timpani are. I know some of you don't really need a new car, but you know, timpani are nice. Uh, but we do again have some great events coming up tomorrow at the Creekwood Park. Monday, our instrumental awards in the Vikings Den. Of course, graduation again. The fireworks booth in the Fourth of July parade this summer uh, again help help be part of our leadership moving forward. We've continued to do new things here at Johansson over the last seven years. We're going to continue to keep doing that uh, through next year and beyond. So please be part of the leadership with us. Keep coming to support. Keep supporting your kids as they go through things. Uh, we'll keep being able to be the leaders we want to be.
you go. Make sure you continue to join us in, in what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you.